Harith, thank you so much for joining us on The Light Breakfast. Thank you for having me. My know, pleasure, as usual, although in, under different circumstances. Yeah, that, yeah. that was just it. We, we just had you recently on Funniest People in the World. But today, um, we're going to talk more about this initiative that you and your wife just started, the Hope Branch. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Hope Branch? Like what motivated you both to start this initiative? Well, uh, I think it started just uh, when the MCO began on March the 18th. Uh, we were just chatting and then uh, just came across my mind like, hey, since uh, daily wage earners are affected, that was the first thing I was thinking about, you know, uh, how will they get a, a wage just to earn enough to, to eat for that day? Then, then I started thinking about the homeless because we have uh, had experience with uh, the Pativi Kitchen before and Lost Food Project. So I was just running in my mind like, I wonder how these people are going to be affected. Then I contacted uh, Dr. Munira from Pativi. And then she said, yes, we are affected this way. And then one thing turned to another. And we started seeing stories of uh, frontliners in hospitals requiring, um, uh, you know, PPEs, personal protection equipment. And then my wife had already started making contacts with the suppliers of these kinds of equipment from China. And then the dominoes began to fall. And then finally on March 23rd, we just said, you know what? Instead, of, we, we were thinking, oh, how should we do this? Should we do, you know, how, what should we do? So, you know what, instead of just thinking about how should we do it, just do it. So we just quickly set out a, a, a messages. We, we worked out the logistics for it. And then from that point onwards, what we thought was going to be at most a three day a week concern of ours has now become a daily concern because we're getting so many messages, requests, and now we have provided PPEs to uh, the police in Slango, the police in Pera. We've got, we've got, People from Dringanu coming in today on a daily basis. We're, we're serving out meals to, to to homeless, to daily wage earners. So that's how it started. It just started as a, I wonder how these people are doing. That's how it started. Just from a thought of like for the less fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was just thinking, because I know a lot of people who, uh, including comedians who, you know, live hand to mouth. Like I'll do something today. I'll get paid today. And then. I'll have some groceries to buy today, you know, and, and we take that for granted. What happens if your supply line or your job line or your daily wage line is cut off for the next, what began as 14 days and then it's now become a month? Wow, how, how is that going to affect you? It just, yeah. just snowballed. And I thought, there are so many people out there who are going to be affected. Yes, definitely. Now, I know that um, I saw on your Instagram that Dr. Jasmine actually at one point, she personally cooked for over a thousand people. <laughs> what? Wow. How did, how, she, how did she manage to do that? And like, okay. she's truly that, a superwoman, that woman. That's, that's not just at one point. She's almost doing it on a daily basis. Oh, wow. Um, we, I mean, we're blessed. We have a, a, you know, a, a kitchen that we can, uh, an area outside the kitchen. It's just a matter of getting a quali out there, a couple of extra tongs of gas. But uh, yeah, she, I'm not a cook myself, but she, you know, she, my wife had a restaurant in 2009. Uh, and so we, she has experience in this. And then, you know what, at the end of the day, you may think, oh, even I, you know, I'm thinking, wow, a thousand people. But if you just put your head down and you just go, here's what I need, A, a B, C, D, E, here's how much I need, let's go out, get shopping and, you know, let's just do it. It, it kind of falls into place. So, but yeah, she, I, I couldn't do what, I couldn't do what she... I could eat for a thousand people. I couldn't cook for a thousand people. <laughs> yeah, but have you never thought of like ha outsourcing that maybe instead of uh, well, Dr. Jasmine yes, doing we, it herself? Yeah. We do have... Since then, we've had a lot of wonderful, wonderful supporters uh, come up and say, hey, uh, can I um, you know, send you some mee hoon and mee goreng or can I send you some nasi lemak to help out? So we have had just random people on social media have stepped up, you know, sent us 50 packets of nasi lemak or 50 packets of, of me goreng and say, can you, you know, I saw you cooking uh, here, let me help you kind of thing. So thank you so much. The amazing, here's the amazing thing. What's, what has happened since then, I think we've made so many, or we've met so many amazing people out there who have just stepped up and contributed. And those are the people we could accept contribution from. There's some who said, I've got a, I've got a truck. Can I, can I help you send things? Now, there's so, you know, there's so much restriction in terms of 
travel. So yeah. unfortunately, no, we, we, you know, we can't ask you to risk your going out and getting arrested for us. Mm. But so many people have stepped up and, and that's just the most amazing thing about doing this, the whole branch. Yeah. How many people are actually in your team right now? I mean, I believe you, Harith, you're, you're doing all the groundwork yourself as well, right? Yeah. So there's me, uh, there's my wife, uh, I've got three minions, my kids. <laughs> they, Are they, they helping out too? Or are they making they more of a mess? The, they, make, they help out and make more of a mess at the same time. <laughs> but they're helping out with the packing and you know, with, with the labeling stuff. Uh, I also have a, a couple of people from uh, the Joke Factory as well who live around the area and, and can help out as well. Uh, two people on my staff as well as my brother-in-law. So it's... It's a very, very small team, but fortunately, there are those frontliners, you know, the, the, the people who are, they're delivering, uh, trucks delivering, grab deliveries and stuff. So we are able to, to maneuver. Uh, so, you know, uh, this is a fundraising. What we try to do, we try to turn the funds around, which of course includes transport, logistics. Um, but it, as you find out, whenever there's a problem with the situation, there's always a, a way to get over it. And you just work out the best way to, to maneuver that, that blockage. Yeah. Actually, a lot of people always wonder because there are so many different initiatives online. Uh, some musicians are playing music to try and raise funds and whatnot. But in your case, the Hope Branch, it started out with money out of your own pocket just to feed people. And then now you're getting donations. Yeah, well, it started off with, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's send this amount of money. Let's buy these, these PPEs with our own money. So we put our own money up front and we put our own initiative up front. But we, we already made, you know, come to the numbers, listen, if we're going to be feeding at that time what we thought was going to be 100 or 200 people a week at the yeah. time, you know, we couldn't do this forever. So let's try and reach out for like-minded people who can support. And it very quickly escalated, you know, 1,200 meals, uh, 1,500 meals almost a week. So, yeah, it started out with us, us putting our own money which is not a big deal. I mean, we're fortunate, we're blessed enough to, to be able to do that. Yep. Uh, that's my perspective. I'm like, yeah, I, I get it there. I mean, the messages I get on social media are well, heartbreaking from, you know, uh, mothers who are like, you know, my baby hasn't had milk for two days. Can you help me? Where are you? I'm in Klantan. Uh, yeah. Okay, what do I do? You know, I'm in Joho. Surprising number of messages from Joho, from Kedah from Trunganu and so I Joho I've, I've made contact with some people down there who are doing the groundwork and get get them to support um, trying to look for people in Klantan as well but you know it's there's so many people out there who are just way beyond uh, they, they need they need support they need support and so whatever we have and we're blessed to have you know I don't I don't mind supporting them yeah but how do you make sure though that the right group of people receive the eight like is there a system that you've worked okay. out or okay yeah so yeah you, you've got to do a little bit of fact checking uh the, the 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 balance here is you can't respond to everyone and just send them money just like that so yeah. we you know we, we get a number we get a contact we get we get photographs um if we're reaching out to refugees we reach out to the refugee ngos who are helping them we say hey uh, this is the refugee card is this real you know we, we do a little bit of fact checking okay and there are people who, who, who are already doing this and do, doing it very well. So we're not doing this alone. We're not thinking, oh, I'm going to start this and I'm going to be the best at this. There are already people out there doing this. So we check with them and, and we work together with them. And so it's, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a collaboration. So my wife is in a little distribution group. Within this group, there are all these NGOs who are already supporting refugees, single mothers, underprivileged. So we exchange information. We're like, hey, I got re reached out by five single mothers in this area. Someone else goes, yes, I know them. This is real. Boom. We're in there. Mm. You know, but there, there will be people who take, try to take advantage of it. And you just try and keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Now, besides food and PPE, what else has been donated to the needy via the Hope Branch? Okay, yeah. So groceries, food, are the most obvious. We're just talking about a daily to day to day basis. Things that we take for granted, like you know, milk. Mm. It's expensive, especially yeah. baby milk, uh, and the PPEs. PPEs are frighteningly expensive because the whole world requires PPEs, and yep. therefore that pushes the price up. Uh, 
but I tell you, I tell you other, funny other things that, not say funny, but uh, strange things that you never thought about was within this, this group that my wife is in, you know, suddenly there are all these underprivileged or refugee women who are nine months pregnant. They're going to give birth. Now you go to any hospital, you give birth, oh, wow. uh, you know, it could be a thousand, two thousand <clears throat> ringgit at least minimum. These are women who have zero. Oh my God, what do you do? This is, we're not talking about what we're, we're trying to get them some food. We're try, trying to get them some money so they can get into hospitals so they can give birth so that the baby can live. Yeah. So it's more immediate, you know, and end of the day, someone you know, pulls out amount of money there and then within this small group and at least three babies can be born today. It's that, it's that sharp and defined and fast mm -hmm. because you're not going to say, oh yeah, I'll get some money to this lady five days later. No, no, no. Baby born, being born today. Now, yeah. what are you going to do? Leave them on the street? No, you can't. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. So, so your team and yourself, you're on the street doing this, uh, you know, going buying stuff. And I know I saw on your Instagram, you were like pushing five carts on your own <laughs> shopping trolley. Yeah, how can you I, make I, sure I, that you do not risk your health and the health of your team while you're on the job? Yeah. So we, we take, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, you take the necessary precautions. You wear the proper three ply mask if you have it. You wear the gloves, you sanitize. So when I go out, I personally try not to touch anything, uh, even, you know, and when I come back before even doing anything, I, I go straight into the shower and wash before I, before, you know, I hug my children or whatever. So yeah. you take the necessary precautions, but I you know it's nothing like being in a full PPE suit in a, in a hospital somewhere for eight to 12 to 28, four hours. That is, mm -hmm. that is, you know, that's insane. So whatever uncomfortableness we're going through at the moment, you're nothing compared to the frontliners. So it's, it's all good. You well, know. you're considered take, take front lines as well, I guess. Yeah, yeah. you are. Uh, you see, I'm mini minimal, minimalist frontliner. La. I'm not, you know, uh, there's, you, you got to go out grocery shopping. So I might as well go out grocery shopping for a couple of hundred people. So yeah. Same Did you yeah. get, do, do you have to get an approval letter to be able to move around? For, well, for yes. This? So, yeah. uh, of course, because of the unprecedented nature of this, when it, the first couple of weeks, there's a bit of mayhem because, you know, the common trend said this and the NGOs were saying that and everyone is trying to work out a system. So, but now uh, I think the system's in place. We do have approval letters from the necessary common trends. Uh, the police have been amazing. I mean, the police have been understanding. As long as you don't go, you know, they stop you and you don't go, I'm, you know, you're going to yeah, be arrested. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't, yeah. don't don't pull the, I'm, I have my human rights shit. Yes, you have your human yeah. rights. I get it. But you be nice to people, people are nice to you. And, you know, the police are not there to arrest you. They're there to keep the safety. And, and I respect yeah. that and I honor that. And mm -hmm. I say, listen, Bang, I really, these are my letter and these are the boxes and I'm going here and, you know, and then I'm going to U-turn and I'm going to come back. They're like, okay, got it. Go, you know, they, they, they know, they, they know how it is. Yeah. And it helps that your hearth is Kanda as well, right? It, it helps. <laughs> it helps. Uh, somehow they get to know, even with the mask on. You know, I, I rock up and they're like, hey, hey. I'm like, how do you know? How do you know that? <laughs> how do you know? It's Next the hairstyle. It's the hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> now, Harith, how can we as Malaysians help um, the Hope Branch to do more good deeds? Okay. Uh, well, number one, there are many, many, many good people out there doing a lot of good work. Uh, our, uh, the Hope Branch is just one of a big cog of uh, uh, supporters out there. Uh, the Hope Branch itself, yes, we quickly set up a Facebook page and an Instagram page. Uh, and you can also uh, get them directly through myself or, or my wife, Dr. Jasmine Lim. Number one, you, you can most start by staying home. The longer most more people stay home, and no matter how difficult it is, the faster we'll be able to flatten the curve. And, and so whenever someone says, I'm so sorry, I can't come out and help you, I'm like, I get it. St help by staying home, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, if you can, you know, at, at most contribute. We've had amazing contributions. Everything down from, I think, lowest is one ringgit or 10 ringgit, right up to donors, you know, silent donors, no name, not wanting to be mentioned, giving, you know, up to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 and more. And it's, we're like, wow, people have been so giving. What I've found most interesting is as the weeks have gone on, now, Hope Branch has been going on for a couple of weeks, 
we're getting people are hearing about us more i think because they're seeing that yeah we are we're out there doing things mm. not you know we're not huge we, we don't have lorries and trucks that we can throw everywhere i've i've, I've got a i've got a little a van and i've got grab and you know delivery lorries and all but so yeah so i think within the next couple of days we're sending uh, eight huge boxes over to Sandakan and Koti Kinabalu for the Mount Elizabeth Hospital there because they reached out to us. And so we got in touch with Malaysia Airport Brahad, who've been amazing, by the way, and given us a, an amazing deal. What a great, great, everyone, everyone knows everyone is suffering, but at the same time, let's work together, you know? So I, that's what I've, my biggest lesson from the MCO so far is there are there's a lot of good out there. There's a lot of good. And I'm glad most of the time we're not bickering and at each other's throat about what party you support or what football team you support. <laughs> so if we wanted to uh, give and if you wanted to donate, what's the best to, to give, okay. like, give money, cash? Is that the best? The, the best would be that where we try. It's a daily basis. The spending is on daily. You have no idea how, uh, how, how many groceries you buy, you want to feed 200 people or 1,200 people. It's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. So yeah, money into the, the May Bank account. Uh, I, I almost know it offhand by now. Five one four two three five six seven zero oh, nine one two. That's one thing I've learned. It's the only number I've learned since uh, the hand phone has started coming out. Yeah. What's your wife's phone uh, number? Do you remember that? I hope... Uh, my wife's phone number. Of course, I don't I say it on wife. air. But <laughs> don't say like, it here. Of course, he remembers. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she's get, she's getting. Up. I get, I remember her phone number. She does not remember my phone number. <laughs> right. she I remember, remember the bank number. Birthday. That's more important. No, she doesn't remember my birthday. She doesn't remember our anniversary. <laughs> it's all good because she cooks for thousand two hundred people. Yeah, but yeah, that's amazing. We can go to just go to our our pages. Uh, Harith Iskander, Harith Iskander comedian, and just look for the Hope Ranch as well. It, all the details are there. And if you if you can't find the details, just send a message. I can't find the details to, to our Facebook or our Instagram. We'll help yeah. you out. All right. Now, Harith, are there any plans to make the Hope Brunch a legit NGO <laughs> beyond okay. the MCO? <laughs> Funny you should say that because <laughs> after, after doing this a week, my wife looked at each other and said, we're working harder now <laughs> than we ever have in the last 10 years. This working at home stuff is... Literally, I've not watched any Netflix. <laughs> I haven't seen the Tiger King. I haven't watched Astro. I haven't watched any HBO Astro. I haven't watched any any TV or movies. I've seen a little bit of cartoons because my kids are watching the cartoons. So I know what's going on with uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so right now our goal is April 28th, uh, the end of the MCO, unless they extend it. But after that, I think we will have some kind of momentum and that's, and we all know after that, the economy is not going to be great. Yeah. There's still going to be people who need support. And so mm. uh, as long as we can, we're going to keep trying to support with your help, with everybody's out there help. Yeah. This does not happen alone. Trust me. I mean, I'm sure both of you feel tired, but the rewards of, of doing this yeah. uh, definitely outweighs it, right? Every once in a while, we get a, a message on social media uh, you know, like, thank you or, or, you know, for doing this. And even when I deliver myself personally to the areas around me, to hospitals and all, they're, they're, I mean, they're all covered up 24 hours a day in the mask and everything, but they're, they're excited that someone from outside came to see them. So, it's, it, you know, they would like to shake hands, but, you know, like, <laughs> but, you know, at least that bit of excitement also. I'm like, yeah, okay. I, you know, it was, it was, it was fun. It's, it's good. I, it's a, yeah, there's a good feeling. Okay. It feels good. Yeah. You were saying that this is like the, the hardest that you've worked in the past 10 years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. But do you feel like this is, this is so much more rewarding than when you were in corporate or in, in comedy? It is, it is rewarding in the sense that not just the people that we're supporting, but the people that we've met and, and who, who have now, at least online, become associates friends, maybe one day we'll meet them personally, who are continuously supporting, just stepping forward and going, hey, if you're looking for this, I can put you in touch with that person. Or if you're looking for that, I can buy this and send it to you. And these are just complete strangers, complete strangers. And for them to have that trust in us, 
and and I try as much we try as much as possible to return that trust. Thank you for your contribution. Look here, we bought this, and it's going to this person. So you know, it's mm -hmm. wonderful. It's, that has been quite an eye opener for me. I'm just making a lot of new. I like to say friends. Mm -hmm. Well, thank awesome. you so much for your good work. Uh, hopefully, we will see more of you in comedy as well <laughs> after this yes. whole MCO is yes. over. <laughs> well, just to let you know that uh, uh, this, I mean, you guys, are you both at home at the moment? Yes, we yeah. are. Yeah. See, yeah. we are now into a new, like after this, we're like, why do we need to go back to the Exactly, the office all right. <laughs> Um, yeah. Do I need to spend 45 minutes driving and eight minutes yeah. looking for my parking? No, this is the new normal. So yeah, I've got some stand-up comedy things happening. Uh, I've got a we've got a site on Patreon.com called the Joke Cut. Oh, Patreon, yeah. Patreon, where we're trying to uh, keep the comedians alive, keep live comedy alive. Uh, I'm doing uh, right after this. I'm doing a talk show with a Bangladesh uh, live live talk show from Bangladesh. Who would have uh -huh. thought? Uh, and so the, you know, the joke factory continues. And right now we are really strategizing how live comedy can be brought to you and earn, make an earning for, for the comedians, because this is what the, com the comedians themselves, this is what they do. They, they perform. Yeah. So we're working that out. It's coming to you soon. Virtual comedy. Interesting. Virtual comedy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Harris, and send our Thank regards you. to Dr. Jasmine as well. Good Thank job, you. both of you, uh, and yeah. stay Thank safe. You. Yeah.